Hello, my name is Chris and welcome to the first part of my Armor Free tutorial on spawning in units using the Armor Free editor. Spawning in this context simply means creating units during your mission that were not there at the start. This video will be about spawning in a group of AI with the exact units in you wish to have. My next video will be a follow up to this one and it's simply about giving the groups we've created in this video waypoints and that simply means making them move and do the stuff we want them to do. My third video will demonstrate different methods of spawning units in. My fourth video is going to be about using everything we've talked about in the previous three videos in a multiplayer context. Our fifth and final video will be specifically about spawning in vehicles and aircraft. Okay and let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is place a trigger on the map and we can do this by pressing F3 and then double clicking where we'd like the trigger to appear. An insert trigger box will appear and we need to change the activation field to the faction of our choice. You could set the trigger up so only OP4 triggered it or you could set it up so only BLUE4 triggered it. For the purposes of this video I'm going to change to anybody so if anybody walks into this trigger they're going to set it off. So anybody present we're going to leave the condition as this. And in the on activation field, we're going to type hint. Open quotation marks. This trigger is working. Then we're going to close the quotation marks. And we're going to put a semicolon at the end. We're going to hit OK. And we're going to place a playable unit. Again, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to put a civilian on the map. And that's simply so, when I spawn OP4 in or BLUE4 in, they're not going to shoot at me if I am their enemy faction. And now all we're going to do is test that the trigger works by pressing preview. Now that we are in preview mode, I'm going to start running forward into the trigger area and we're just going to check that it works. If it works, we should get a box appear in the top right. And there we go, we've triggered the trigger and our message says this trigger is working, which is perfect. Now that we know we have a working trigger, I'm going to exit out the game and we'll look at actually spawning in units. Now, for this part of the video tutorial, we're just going to be working inside the trigger and in the on activation box. I am now, however, going to tab out the game and we're going to look at a bit of code we're going to put in there. And I'm just going to walk us through it and talk about what each part does. The first thing we're going to look at is the Bohemia Interactive's wiki. And in particular, we're going to look at a page on Bisfunk Spawn Group. There's a little bit of, of a description here about what it does, but essentially it allows us to create groups in the game. If I scroll down a little bit further, you'll see there's a few examples, and we're going to look at all these examples. For now, I'm just going to work with example 3, and I'm going to copy that into my Notepad++, so we can have a little bit of a look at it and see what it does. Don't worry about any of this code, I'm going to paste it all into the bottom of the video description. I'm just going to walk you through what it does though. Starting from the end, if I highlight that, we can see that two of the brackets are highlighted red. Now everything in between those two red brackets is part of an array, and it's part of an array for bisfunk spawn group. Each bit in between a comma does something different. I'm just going to walk you through each different bit and give you an idea what it does. So the first bit that I've got highlighted is a position and that's the position the group you're spawning in is going to start at. The second part of the array is the side the group you're going to spawn in belongs to. 
in this case, in the example, it's east. Then we get to another pair of red brackets I'm going to highlight now. Everything inside those two red brackets that are highlighted now is the units we're going to spawn in. So, as we can see in the example, there are two different units. These are Armour 2 examples. I'm going to delete those in a minute. And the last bit of the array, you'll see a lot of these closed square brackets. Now that's because these are optional. And for simplicity's sake, we're going to leave them blank during my video. The very, very last thing at the end is 180. Now, 180 on a 360 compass is south. And that's the direction that the units are going to spawn in facing. Then we close the array. And it's call this func spawn group. Now, at the end of every line of a script, we need to put a semicolon. We don't want armor 2 units because we're in armor 3. So I'm going to delete those for now. We're going to leave the faction as east. And I'm going to change this position to get marker pause open quotation marks my group start now what I've done there is I've just told the script to find a marker called my group start and we simply place down markers in the same way we place down units in the editor the last thing I'm going to do to this script before we go and find some class names for the third part of the array is I'm going to give the group I'm spawning in a name and I'm going to call the group my actually underscore my group equals so my group equals everything in the array the last thing we need is some units in the third part of the array. And I'm going to show you how to find class names now. And class names are what go in between the quotation marks. The website we're going to look at is sixprojects.net. And that's by Sickboy, who created Six Updater, among other things. And that's the most complete list of class names I've found so far. So you can use the options up at the top here to. Uh, display faction names in this column or different objects and whatnot. You can also use the vehicle class to determine uh, what kind of things you're looking at as well, such as armor or men. We're going to look at op4 men, and there's a complete list here of everything it seems that you can spawn in from the op4 side that is a man is a soldier and let's see I think the one we'll go for today is the Iranian officer and I'm just going to copy his class name back into our script here and that goes in between those quotation marks in the third part of our array now the script with the way we've got it set up now is going to spawn one man in. If you want to spawn two men in, i.e. have a second man in this group, all we need to do is put a comma, open some more quotations, and in between there we're going to paste the class name again. Obviously you don't need to use the officer. Um, again again you can put whatever you want in each of these men's names um, but I'm just going to copy and paste it a few times let's have four officers that we're going to spawn in the important thing to remember is the last one you put in does not need a comma after it All right, and that's us done really here um, we've created a group called my group by the way 
my group's just a name. You could call it anything you want. It doesn't have to be my group. It could be, I don't know, team one, for example. My group equals my group start. That's where we're going to have our group starting. And I'll show you how to put markers down in a minute. It's going to be east. And we're going to have four Iranian officers in the group. They're going to be facing south when they spawn. And that's it. So I'm just going to take all the code we've talked about here. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to tab back into the game. And now that we're back in the game, we're going to double click on our trigger. We're going to delete our code from earlier that told us the trigger was working. And we're going to paste our script into the on activation field. If you don't know how to paste into the box, by the way, it's control V, the standard way of pasting in Windows. And we're going to hit OK. There's two more things we need to do before we press preview. And that is, we're going to insert a marker, and that marker is going to be where our group starts. So, we called it in the script, my group start. And in the name field of the insert marker box, we're just going to type my group start, and press OK. And that's created a marker called my group start, and that's where our group's going to start. There's one more thing we need to do before we press preview, and that is put a unit, a single unit, from the side we are spawning in on the map. Now, it's a little bit complicated why you need to do this, but essentially we're creating a center for the group. So I'm going to choose an op for unit. If you've got other units running around on the map that are up for, that's fine, just leave it how it is. A nice little trick though, if you don't want any up for on the map to start with, is to slide the probability of presence bar right down to zero, and that'll mean the unit does not exist. It won't start, but it does serve the function of creating a center for the group we're spawning in. If you didn't have a unit on the map from the faction you're going to spawn in, nothing is going to happen to your script when you call it. Okay, and if I press F6 again, I can see the marker. And we're ready to go. So I'm going to hit preview. And as we can see that... Um, that up four unit hasn't spawned in. I'm going to start moving forwards. And whenever we walk into the trigger area, we're going to see the group appear in front of us. Oh, and there they go. A little bit of lag because I'm running fraps. Um, okay, so we've created four Iranian officers and they've gone into formation. Now, one bug with armor free I've noticed is one of these guys tends to run on the spot. He never gets too far. He'll come back into formation in a minute. And I don't know why that is. I'm going to assume it's some sort of armor free bug because this doesn't happen in armor 2 and it doesn't always happen in armor free when you spawn the unit in. So just ignore that guy that's running back and forth. When we give these, when we give this group a waypoint in the next video, um, it completely overrides whatever he's doing there, and they'll go off and their, uh, they'll go off and find their waypoint. So I'm just going to exit back out of the game, and this is a good place to end the video. Remember, links to all the websites we've looked at today are in the description of this video, as well as all the code we've used, so feel free to just copy and paste that into your mission and try it out for yourself. Next time we're going to be looking at giving the group we've just spawned in waypoints. So until next time, have fun making your missions, goodbye.